Congressman came a message, and I sat there and fretted and fussed over it this afternoon. It just took me back to where I started. Maybe we'll get the, the one and the second one. I've, I've been carrying two messages. And I thought God was going to push the other one ahead of this one, but I took me back to this one. Tonight, I've got a title for this message. It's called No Vacancy. And when you think about No Vacancy, I'll just tell you how I got my message. I was working on a float for the church yesterday. And I built a little manger. And I built a little deal, a little old deal where you put the manger in the stable. I was standing back and God said, there was no room. Amen. So I'm just going to read one verse. Out of Luke, the second chapter of Luke, and I'm going to read the seventh verse. get my eyes where I can see. I'm just going to read the one verse. Luke 2, 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. You may be seated. Some people think that's a Christmas message. We're going a different way. We're going a salvation message. Amen. Today we have took put no vacancy signs for Jesus Christ in our schools. We put new no vacancy signs up in a lot of our churches today and we don't want Jesus in there. That's right. We keep putting up no vacancy signs and telling him he's not welcome. Yep. But I'm here tonight to tell you, as I worked on that old manger and that stable and over there yesterday on the back of that deal, God showed me some stuff. God said there wasn't no room for me in the end. I had to be born out there in the old dirty old stable, and that's significant. Because each and one, each and every one of us was in a dirty, dark place. Amen. And Jesus come to that old dirty, dark place. Right. And God showed me as I was building that float. We put a manger scene up at the front, and at the back we got an old rugged cross. Amen. God said, "I done it all for you." Amen. From the beginning when I was born in an old manger in an old stable in an old stink and then in the, the filth that I died on an old rugged cross. Yeah. He done it for you tonight. Amen. He Amen. done it all for you tonight. Right. He done right. every deal. He went through everything he went through from Genesis to Revelation for Amen. you. I tell you what tonight. Well, everything God went, Jesus went through here on this earth, He did for you tonight. Yeah. He didn't do it for you to put a no vacancy sign up and tell Him He's not welcome Amen. in your heart and life tonight. Amen. I tell you what tonight, God said He welcome each and every one of you. He don't care if you're in an old stable somewhere, living a filthy old life and things are going around you and you're doing things you don't need to be doing. But I'll tell you what, tonight God's there for you. Amen. And He wants to take you and show you what He did for you on yeah, an old right. cross yeah. from 2,000 years ago when He crawled up old Golgotha's hill and He died upon an old cross for you. Amen. I tell you what, we don't Amen. take this birth of Jesus as serious sometimes as we should. Yeah. We need to look at where Jesus come from. We need to look Amen. at what he, where He started. He started out, He wasn't even welcome in the end. I tell you what, tonight there's a lot of people out there today that are not welcoming me in, this, in their heart yep. and in their life. I tell you what, tonight we need some men and women of God to get serious and say, I want God, I want God in my life because He's done it all for me. Amen. He's done it from the beginning Amen. to the end. Amen. I tell you what, He's done it all. Amen. He went through temptation. He went through torture for you, for you to be here tonight. He's done it all. He took uh, he took the took the sins of the world. He got up there on an old rugged cross, and he took the old cup, 
and what was in that old cup was everything you ever done yep. and everything you ever want to do against him and he had to take that old cup up and he took that old bitter cup up and he drunk that old cup and he took all your sins that you've ever done upon you and he was willing to go up on an old cross and he was willing to die for you and he was willing to give up his life for you I tell you what tonight we need to thank God for what he's done for us I tell you what tonight we need to get serious and start looking and say is my heart where it needs to be tonight am I living the life I need to live or have I got a no vacancy sign out on the out on my heart you know I can play church I can come to church and Act like everything's good and mighty, but I tell you what tonight, if you're not saved tonight, if you've not come down to an old, rug, an old altar and say, God, forgive me for what I've done, you're going to die and you're going to go to the devil's hell. Yeah. I tell you what tonight, our Savior was born in an old manger down there with the sheep and the goats and the donkeys. And I tell you what, if you've ever been in an old stable, me and Kathy's got a giant old horse barn out there. We had stall used to trade and buy and trade horses all the time you walk up and down that old deal it stunk yeah. i tell you what old jesus christ he was down there in the old manger yeah. but he's probably stunk he probably didn't smell the best yeah. but i tell you what today he took the old sin that you've got in your life right. that didn't smell the best and didn't put up the great savor and the great smell to jesus but jesus looked down and he said i want that one yeah. Yeah. i want that one tonight I tell you what, tonight, if you're not living for God the way you need to live for God, I tell you what, tonight, we need more people. You know, every time I see somebody get saved in this church, I just get a little more hungry, Shane. A little more hungry. I just want to see it grow. I tell you what, I see we're going to have a problem if we're not careful because we're running out of chairs and we're running out of space. And I praise God for that. I praise God for running, letting us run out of space. Because I know God will give us a bigger place and we need a bigger place. And we'll make more room because we're going to fit them in here. I tell you what, we need. We, there's a hunger in this land today, people. Today that need to know about, want to know about Jesus Christ. Everybody says, well, the old book's okay. But I tell you what, today I see more people hungering for the truth yeah. Yeah. they're tired of what the world's offering them right. they're tired of what the modern church is offering them right. they're all they're offering is modern psychology and i tell you yeah. what tonight i can show you something better than modern psychology it's in between this old covers and this old book yeah i tell you what tonight there's some salvation and i tell you what tonight if you never give your heart and life to jesus i don't know why god's taking me this way but I tell you what, tonight God's telling me to tell him that there's a way that to receive the greatest gift that was ever Amen. given on this earth. It was a little old baby down in the manger. I tell you what, tonight that was willing to go up and die upon an old cross and give it all for you. He was willing to go out in the desert with the devil, and the old devil tempted him for 40 days. He was willing to stand up and say, I'm not giving up. I've got a mission to do. There's some people down there in Morrisville, Missouri, that need to hear about to hear about me, and I'm not going to give up. Amen. I'm going to just you go on through. The old devil ain't got nothing to offer me tonight. Amen. The old devil's trying to offer you something tonight. You just need to turn away and say, God, I need you. Amen. I want to take the no vacancy off the off my heart tonight, Amen. and I want to put it in there. That I want Jesus in my heart. Amen. I don't want my heart full of Jesus. I don't want the world in my heart. I want to get some things that are in my life Amen. that are tearing me down spiritually, tearing me down physically. Amen. I tell you what, tonight, we're not careful. The old devil will get in there and he'll start tearing you down. He'll get inside your heart. We need to have a no vacancy sign for the devil. Amen. Say, devil, we want you out. We want Amen. Jesus in. Amen. Sometimes some of us are going to have to kick the old devil out of our life. Yep. And say, I'm tired of this. Yep. I'm tired of living for you. Yep. Tonight, I tell you what, we need to get serious and say, God, thank you for what you've done for me. Amen. I tell you what, I've been living on cloud nine watching all these people get saved Amen. in the church. It just lifts me up. I tell you what, when things are going down, sometimes I'll get a little down and that's Gary. Gary will start pulling himself down. He'll get to think of things he should. Well, this ain't going the way it should, and this ain't going the way it should. But I tell you what, God's got a plan for this place. He's got a plan for his people. He's yeah. going to take this little place. He's going to make something special. Yeah. There's going to be more souls saved. There's going to be more than hearts and lives changed. There's going to be more people coming into this church. And I tell you what, we've got to be ready. 
we got to be ready to show them the gift of Jesus Christ Amen. and Him crucified and tell them that there's only one way to heaven. You can play church or you can be in the church. Right. I tell you what, right. tonight, we don't need nobody in here playing church. Yeah. We need people that are serious about Jesus Christ Amen. and are willing to give their heart and life to Jesus yeah. and say, I'm going to give it all to Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to have my heart full of Jesus. I tell you what, <laughs> Katie was telling me today, it's probably one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I'll probably just turn over there now. That was probably the second message I was thinking about. I've been thinking about it for days. We'll go on over in the book of Luke. Still in the second chapter. We're going to talk about one of the greatest things that ever happened. We're going down to old 25. And there behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And then the same man was just clean my eyes and just in devout waiting for the con consultation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord Christ. And it came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do, do for him after the customs of the law, and took him up in his arms and blessed him and got, blessed God and said, Lord, now that I, thy servant, departeth in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen the salvation. Amen. 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 Yeah. That's what the Christmas story is about. Amen. I'll tell you what it is about a little old baby to come here to give his life for you. Amen. It's about a little boy that come here and old Simeon said he was under the old Holy Ghost. I tell you what, we need some men and women in the church to get a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They sung a song down there in Niagara. And that was called, I just want a double dose. I'll tell you what tonight, Brother Shane, I just want a double dose of the old Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what tonight, we need some men and women of God to get under the Spirit of God. I'll tell you what, when you're in the house of God, you need a little bit of the Holy Ghost to come right. down upon you. You need a little bit of the Holy Ghost to come down upon your heart and life. I'll tell you what, Katie was telling me she's teaching the little kids my care about old Simeon. I tell you what, there's another part of that story. They talked about an old lady, an old woman named Anne. And she was about 70 some years old. And they said she'd come there every day praying. I tell you what, we need some Simeons and we need some hands. We need some hands to get in this church to get serious about praying for those that are lost and are dying and going to a devil's hell. I tell you what, tonight, if you got somebody in your heart and your life that are just dying today and going to a devil's hell, it wouldn't hurt to get serious about praying for them. Yeah. Be like, go in and show up every day, every time the church doors was open. Said she was there. And I tell you what, tonight, we can need people like we got right here tonight that's willing to show up when the doors are open. Yeah. And I tell you what, tonight, we need some more women and men and women of God get serious about praying for those that we can show them the great gift that's about <coughs> that we're about to celebrate, and that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. I tell you what, woman. Whenever we go on this parade, we're going to be setting an example to this all lost and dying yeah, city. Right, I'll right. tell you what, we need to get out there and show the love of Jesus Christ. Right. No matter what yeah. they've done, no matter what they're addicted right. to, no matter where they're at, no matter what kind of stink or filth yeah. they're yeah. in, we need to be willing to go up to them and give them a hand of fellowship and tell them that they're welcome in this church. Yeah. And yeah. that we're not going to judge them for what they are yeah. or where yeah. they've yeah. been or That's what right. they've done. Amen. They're going to be welcome here no matter what. We're going to open our arms up and tell them that we love them, Jesus loves them, and that Jesus is the only way to, to heaven. We're going to tell them that there's a way called salvation. And that's through God, God's is healed. And what Jesus done up there on an old Amen. rugged cross. That's right. And they hung a crown of thorns upon his head. And they'd be scorned and beat him. Yeah. But I tell you what, he went up there willingly to die for you. Yeah. To give his life for you. Amen. I tell you what, tonight we need some men and women to, to get serious and say, I want that gift that you got for me. I want that gift of salvation. I tell you what, you can walk away. You can pretend like it ain't. You don't want no part of it. You may be a young person in this church thinking, 
boy, when I get up for 16, 18 years old, I'm just going to quit that nonsense of going to church. But I tell you what, I was there. I've been there. Listen. I tell you what, it's no road to go. Amen. It's no road to go. Come I tell you what, it. I went out there and I thought, right. you know, all my friends said, well, you're the preacher's son. You've got to be the most wildest. I'm telling you what, Lila, don't go and fall for that deal. You stay on the right road. You go out there and honor your mother and your father and say, my mom and father taught me right. I'm going to live for Jesus. Amen. I tell you what, little old Mac here, I tell you what, you just keep living for Jesus. Amen. Don't go when you get up there of age. Don't go and try to go the other way. I tell you what, stay in church and stay Amen. serious. Amen. I tell you what, Come tonight we need some, you know, some mentors for these young people in the church. And I tell you what, tonight, if you're not saved tonight, I don't care if you're 8 or 80. You didn't come down that old altar. Amen. I tell you what. Amen. I tell you what. You can receive the greatest Amen. gift you will ever receive. Amen. You can have the best Christmas. Christmas will have a totally different meaning to you. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you give your heart and yeah. life to Jesus. Amen. I tell you what. Yeah. When you give your heart and life to Jesus, them all wrapped up, Chinese made up, gifts don't mean nothing. Amen. I tell you what. The gift you can receive down here is you blow an old rugged tree. Where Jesus gave his heart and gave his life for you. He went right. down and conquered death, death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. Right. I tell you what, and we need to come down and we need to receive a gift. Amen. I tell you what, tonight we need to get the salvation and, and spread it throughout the land. I tell you what, tonight we need to see more people coming in. We need to see more people saved. I tell you what, we want to offer up a gift to our Heavenly Father. And that's to bring lost souls into his Amen. house. I tell you what, you welcome him, welcome them into his house. And I tell you what, you put your arms around them. Tell them you love them. Amen. Tell them that God's the only way. Amen. Sometimes it's not going to be the most fun thing. I tell you what, I never will forget. Mackie Bellamy had a nephew to come up there to Kingsway. That young man, I can't remember his name off the top of my head tonight. But he'd come in and that old boy, he'd been in prison. He was covered with every kind of white supremacist tattoo there ever that you could put all over your body. I mean, he looked like he looked awful. He looked like somebody you would not want to meet on an old alley. But I tell you, one night up there on a Sunday night, up there in Kingsway Free Will Baptist Church, him and old Donnie both run down to an altar. I can tell you kind of what the message that Brother Randy was preaching. He was preaching. He got off on Mountain Dew of all things. And he said, I like my, he don't like dying Mountain Dew. He likes it straight like he likes his Bible. He wants Amen. the good stuff. Amen. I'll tell you what tonight, that one line in that message caused two men to get saved. And one of them, when you see him, you'd look at him, you'd be like, you'd be scared to death of him. Most people would be scared to death of him. But i tell you what, whenever he got saved, Every Sunday morning after he got saved, he would get up on Sunday morning and start calling people, make sure they was out of bed and they was going to make it to church on time. He ended up finding, they ended up finding him dead from all the drug abuse that he had done and ravaged his body. He fell over dead in a vacant lot up there off of Carney Street. But I believe to this day he's in heaven. I believe he gave his heart and life to Jesus. He received that eternal gift. And I tell you what, tonight... We need to be willing to get out there and give that, tell them, right, other people right. about that gift to Jesus Christ. Right. We need to tell them what he's done for us. And I tell you what, we can't forget what God's doing for us. Amen. We need to look out and say, God's doing this. God's doing that. God's blessing us little old church house. Amen. He's blessing Amen. the preachers that get up here. Right. He's blessing Brother Shane. He's coming down upon him. He's giving him an old dose of the Holy Ghost when he gets up here. Yeah. And I tell you what, we need to be thanking God and say, God, Thank you for what you're doing. You're, you're giving our preacher double dose of the old Holy Ghost, and you're coming down on the ones that are singing, and you're moving the spirit. And I tell you what, hope Brother J.W. was down in the highway. He said, what do you think about the singing? I said, J.W., it's kind of like this. The singing's like the plow. I said, it goes in there, and it starts breaking up the ground and preparing the ground. Yep. I tell you what, we need to thank God that we've got some Holy Ghost-filled singers in our church. Amen. I tell you what, because when they go in here and they go to singing, sometimes they may get a little down and they may get a little tired, but I tell you what, don't give up, because you're preparing the soil for the man of God to get up behind right, right. the whole pulpit. I told him, I said, they get, the old singers get up there and they'll prepare the soil. 
Sometimes they'll get the spirit moving and that makes it just that much easier yeah. for the man of God to get up there behind an old pulpit. Bring out the display his old heart out on the old table Amen. to tell you what God's giving. Amen. I'll tell you what tonight, we need some men and women of God to get an open heart and open their ears to their hearts and say, God, talk to me, talk to me. Tell me what you need me to do, Lord. Amen. Tell me how I can better your kingdom, Lord, and how I can bring people into the fold. I tell you what, tonight, we're going to have to get serious about what we're doing. Right. And if you don't have that eternal security in your life, and knowing Jesus Christ, you can die and you can go to the devil's hell. I tell you what, tonight, you can walk out here and get in your car, and you can head down the highway at 70 miles an hour. And I tell you what, you're not promised to get home. Right. I tell you what, God can take you tonight. You say, well, I only live a few miles from here. It don't matter. Right. And it gets you going out of the parking lot. Amen. I tell you what, tonight, sometimes God's talking to some people and they're not listening. Amen. I tell you what, if God's talking to you about your salvation tonight, and you're not securing your salvation, I tell you what, tonight, it's time to get serious. Amen. It's time to get down to no altar and say, I want to know God. I want to be a better father for my family. I want to be a better mother to my children. I want to be a better this. I want to be a better child for my mom and daddy. And the way you do that is come down to an old altar right. and receive a gift of Jesus Christ Amen. and him crucified for you. Yeah. That way you can live on and you can go spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. Amen. Lord, tonight you can make up your mind and you can go to the devil's hell. Yeah. But one thing you cannot say, the Gary Hall, they got up here behind an old pulpit and church coded for you and told you that yeah. you uh, you can make it right. to coming to church. Because you can come to church till the cows come home, and you're still going to go to hell unless you come That's down right. to the whole altar and right. right. give your heart and life right. to right. Jesus. Right. I'll tell you what, if you come down and you give it all to Jesus, I'll tell you what, you'll never have a good marriage <laughs> until you and your wife or you and your spouse get everything right with Jesus. Right. I'll tell you what. The old devil will tear you down and tear your relationships up. Yep. He'll tear your families That's apart. Right. But I tell you what, when you put Jesus in the center of the whole thing and you take a good dose of salvation and you put it in there and you put a little double dose of the blood upon your marriage, I tell you what, God will move in your family. He'll move in your life. He'll move in your kids' lives. I tell you what, tonight it don't hurt to spend a little time with your kids and tell them about Jesus staring away. All they get is about two and a half, three hours a week through the church. Look how many hours the world's got. Them. That's right. And the world don't have no room for Jesus in their right. in their house. True. Right. TV don't have no room for Jesus. Yeah. Right. They got no vacancy for Jesus to sign mm -hmm. up on their right. on their deal. Half the preachers are preaching in the on the TV today. Need to be locked up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. <coughs> but I'm telling you tonight. Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. That's right. He loves everything about you. That's right. No matter where you've been. No matter what you've done. He's got a gift for you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I didn't want this to be a Christmas message. I said there's a table this afternoon. I thought, what am I going to even talk about? <coughs> but I'm here tonight to tell you that if you do have a vacancy in your heart, you do have a vacancy in your life, if you come down to an old altar tonight, I'll tell you what, we'll introduce you to that man. Amen. Amen. We'll introduce you to somebody that'll change your life. Amen. Amen. Change the outlook on your life. Amen. I'll tell you what tonight, if, if you're not living the life you need to live as a child or an adult, it's time to come down to an old altar. I don't know why I'm preaching this message. God's been all over me yesterday. I was sitting out there and I told Kathy when we was on the way over to Buffalo last time, we had to go get a check from the livestock barn over there. I told Kathy as I looked at that float, I said, God told me, he said, I've done it all from the cradle to the cross Amen. for you. Amen. I've done it all for you. Amen. Jesus done it all for you tonight. That's right. That's right. And it's up to you whether you want to follow him. Amen. 
But if you want to walk away when you get out of age to where you don't have to be forced by your mommy and daddy to drag you to church, I'll tell you what, I had a drug problem when I was a kid. Yeah. We wanted to watch, of all things, the wonderful world of Disney on Sunday night. In my lifetime, I was probably only seen it three or four times on a Sunday night. If they didn't have a special during the week, we didn't watch it. Do you know where we was on Sunday night? We was in some little church somewhere. Southern God. Amen. The world tried to drag us out, put things on TV and things we want to watch. Why do you think they have Sunday night football? Sunday football. The old devil uses that to drag people out of church. I enjoy watching football on the TV. I have things I like to watch about it. If they would leave the politics and the socialism out of it, I would love it a lot more if it would go back to the yep. Sometimes I get sick and when they start all the socialism and all the social change, I'm not into yep. that. We can, they can think all the social change they want to, ch to do, but until they get Jesus in their heart, Amen. they get Jesus in their life, there's not going to be no change. Right. The world is not going to change yet. Nothing we can do in this world will change us. But when we understand the greatest gift that God has ever given us, Amen. involves an old mourner's bench yep. and an old preacher that most people would say too dumb to get up there and behind the pulpit. They didn't think we'd ever graduate high school. They offered him a deal and said, if you're going to leave and never come back, we'll give you a diploma. <laughs> The old world looked at him and said, he's useless, he's a bum, he's going to be a bum, an alcoholic, he's useless. I'm talking about both of them. But I'm here to tell you, no matter where you're at, God can use you. No matter how bad the world thinks you stink, no matter how bad you, the world thinks you are, i tell you what tonight, if you're not right with God, you're not going to live a very That's good right. life. That's right. And I pray tonight that if you're not living the way you need to live for God, and you're not secure in your salvation, and you have not went out and asked God to forgive you your sins, you come down to no altar and say, God, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm preaching this. It may be for somebody that's watching on the internet. I have no idea. But yesterday, Alan, Alan was, the old boy was talking about covering that too. And I'm here to tell you, if you're not saved tonight, you not got your life right, I pray to God that he'll put a conviction on you. Yeah, amen. He'll take sleep from your eyes. And if you have a loved one that has fallen out of church, You've had somebody in your life that ain't going to church like they need to go. It wouldn't hurt to come down to an old altar and say, God, help me show them the way. Help them show, let me show them where they need to go. I've got a son that's fallen out of church. We had a long conversation the other night, and he was talking about a man of God, a supposed man of God he knew was drinking wine, and how he felt like that might be right. And all I could see was my son slipping away from Jesus. And I tell you what tonight, if you're slipping away, it's time to come down to no altar and share up your buddies. Make sure what you're doing is right. Make sure you're right with Jesus. I tell you what, if we can just have a song of invitation, I think I'm about done. I think I'll give all my lungs to God. All lungs are on fire right now. If you ain't got nothing else to pray for, if you come down and pray for my son, I'd appreciate it. Because if anything's no change, you're going to die and go to hell.